I recently saw a couple of threads on Reddit where folk were having issues with old Bitcoin paper wallets. Basically they were unable to import these wallets or sweep the private keys because they were getting messages like the private key was invalid, didn't have any balance, had an incorrect checksum or they simply weren't even able to click the next button in Electrum. These situations would have been straightforward recoveries for BTC Recover as I actually added support for raw private key recoveries back in January 2022, though I hadn't got around to doing a video on it. so. Here it is. And if you haven't already done so, hit subscribe and that way you can stay in the loop for content I make to help you find your way in the crazy and often hostile environment that is cryptocurrency. Now before we get into some example recoveries, one thing I want to quickly talk about is different types of private keys for Bitcoin paper wallets because you actually need to understand a little bit about this to be able to use BTC Recover for this type of recovery. The most common way that you're likely to see Bitcoin private keys represented is like this. So it's going to be a 52 character string starting with either an L or a K and that is wallet import format. It's base 58 but that is not the only way. So if we just go into wallet details and view details here, you'll see that Bitcoin private keys can also be an uncompressed private key. That's 51 characters starting with a five. That's the compressed one that I mentioned before, or they could be represented as 64 hexadecimal characters. And there have been a variety of additional ways that Bitcoin private keys have been encoded over the years, you know, maybe encoding them as base 64, maybe something like mini private key and so on, which is a bit different again. Uh, but as of today, BTC Recover only supports uh, working with and the recovery of private keys that are encoded in the wallet import format, either compressed or uncompressed, or as a hexadecimal private key. Okay, let's start with some examples. And just to be clear, all of this assumes you have a working installation of BTC Recover. If you haven't got BTC Recover working on your system, you need to run through one of my instruction videos on how to get that set up. And if you still get stuck, the written documentation can also be found here. Okay, so our first example, we'll start off with one of these paper wallets. So basically for our first recovery, we'll just look at the situation where someone for whatever reason didn't store the QR code and where they've just lost four characters off the end. Basically to do a raw private key recovery in BTC Recover is going to make use of the token list or password list functionality. So all of the syntax processes and other things like that we have in BTC Recover is the same, but we're going to add an additional argument that tells it that we want a raw private key wallet. So basically step one is just to navigate to your BTC Recover folder. So we'll just say Python etc recover.py and we're going to say raw private key because we need to do tell it that now the next parameter we're going to add is password list and here we're going to point to the password list file with our partial private key in it so basically our token list and password list could be the text file anyway but for the sake of simplicity i'm just going to go into the btc recover folder and i'm just going to say make a new text file and look, i'll just call that password list.txt open that with a text editor. So basically once we've got our password list, we just put our partial private key in there. And the two different types of wildcards that are relevant for raw private key recoveries are these two here. So basically we have one that can be a base 58 character, and the other can be a hexadecimal character. Because we have a base 58 with private key, we are going to use this one here. So the percent %B is the wildcard we want, and because we know that this private key should be 52 characters long and that we have 48, we know that there will be four missing characters. So that is our wildcard on the end, which will essentially try all possible combinations of four base 58 characters. So we'll just say save. Now if we go back here to BTC Recover, so we'll just say password list, password list.txt. We're also gonna say has wildcards because by default uh, wildcards are not evaluated in password lists. We'll give it an address which is the one from our paper wallet and if you don't have the address for the paper wallet that's fine you can also use this feature in conjunction with an address database which checks against every Bitcoin address ever used and that is actually all we need to do. So now I can just say enter and there we go. So there is the correct private key. Now I just showed you four missing characters just for the sake of simplicity and speed. A general rule of thumb in terms of the kinds of recoveries you could easily do just on an average PC with one to two days uh, is about six uh, missing characters for a WIF encoded private key as long as you know where those missing characters are and about nine missing characters for a hex encoded private key. Though the one thing I will add is if you are doing some of these recoveries going to run for more than a couple of hours, you're definitely going to want to turn on the no dupe checks argument here which will basically uh, make sure that you don't run out of RAM while you are checking. 
Now, the second thing I'll show you is how we use BTC Recover with a hexadecimal key. And this is one where you might have a typo in there somewhere, but you're not sure which character is wrong. And look, we'll just consider that someone maybe made two typos in this hexadecimal private key, but I just want to show you something important about hexadecimal private keys uh, before we move any further. So we'll get our private key from bit address. We'll go here to Brainwall X. We'll just like secret exponent and we'll put the hexadecimal private key in there and we get the same address that we had in bit address. Now, the thing is, if, for example, someone made a mistake and transcribed, you know, this eight as an uppercase B, and made the same mistake over here, you will see that we're not getting any sort of error that this has an invalid checksum, but we're actually just getting completely different addresses. Whereas if I get just a private key and just sort of punch it in there and try and change one of these characters, so let's say I try and change that 8 to a B, uh, you'll see it actually is not accepting it as a valid private key. So it's an important difference to understand in terms of even identifying in the first place what mistake you might have made that's preventing you from accessing your funds. So we'll take our private key and we'll open up our password list. We'll remove the WIF private key that we had in there before and we'll stick our hex one in there. And look, we'll just damage this in the same way. So we'll just change two of these eights to uppercase Bs and we will save that. So that is our password list. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a very similar command to before. So we'll say python btc recover.py raw private key. And we'll say adders. And this is the same address that we just had before, but look, I'll just use the uncompressed one as well, just to show you how that works. It just sort of transparently checks both if you don't specify it. And we will just say password list, password list.txt. And now we're just going to use the same sort of typo syntax that we use in BTC Recover for other types of password recovery. So here we're just going to say typos replace. And then we are just going to say percent uppercase H. So basically we're going to be using this expanding wildcard here with the typos replace command. So what it's essentially going to do is run through every character in this hex private key and try every other possible hex character in its place. So then I'll just say enter. All right, and that didn't find anything. And the reason for that is that by default, BTC Recover only checks up to one typo within the password list. So in this case, we want to check two. So we will say typos two, and then hit enter. And there we go. So it has found the correct hexadecimal private key. Now, just like before, this example I did here was simple for the sake of demonstration and speed. Uh, the general rule of thumb I would suggest in terms of what you can realistically do in a reasonable amount of time for a normal PC would be about up to three typos for a WIF encoded private key, that's base 58, or up to about four for a hexadecimal one. And the big challenge with these types of recoveries is that the small kinds of typos people might make by hand, you know, one or two missing characters are normally pretty straight straightforward, but for a larger number of missing characters, the exponential complexity that increases for every character that is missing basically means that it doesn't matter how much computing power you have, they aren't really recoverable in any practical sense. And this is a really good spot to actually talk about and show you the difference between how robust a private key is stored as a string of text versus as a QR code. If we go back to the private key we used at the very start, we said we were only missing, you know, four characters, you know, maybe up to a max of six in terms of the type of recovery we could do. You know, pretty much the sort of thing where someone might have torn the page in half or maybe there was some small ward damage. And I did mention at the beginning that we're assuming that someone didn't have the QR code. And the reason I said that is the error detection and correction in these QR codes, particularly uh, the way bit address does them by default can actually deal with up to 30% of the QR code being lost and still successfully scan. So if we just take this fresh QR code in the middle, for example, and I just scan that with my phone, you'll see that it scans it straight away and we get the same private key that we had here. And look, if I just put a line through the middle of that, again, whoop, scans it no problem at all. And if I put a few lines through it, you'll see still scans, and I should be able to get this to cover almost a third of the QR code before it stops scanning. Here we go, it's starting to have a bit of trouble now. Oh, there we go. So that actually that had a lot of trouble, but it actually still scanned. So this is obviously a borderline amount of damage. Oh no, there we go. So now, now it's actually not able to pick it up. Yep, that's too much. 
And the reason I wanted to show you that is just to highlight how much more robust a QR code is versus a string representation of your private key. And the reason I say this is if you absolutely insist on using Bitcoin paper wallets still in 2024, your best bet is to print both the QR code and the private key text with a laser printer and to laminate it. Store both. Don't simply store the private key string only. It is extremely fragile. And the last thing I'll finally mention is the private key recovery feature in BTC Recover is not limited to paper wallets generated using bitaddress.org and it does support other cryptocurrencies like Ethereum, uh, pretty much any of the Bitcoin clones uh, will work just fine. Uh, and it also supports more modern address formats for Bitcoin like uh, native SigWit and pay to Scriptash SigWit. So one of the other really good illustrations of just how unsafe paper wallets often are is that pretty much all of the platforms that uh, I tested BTC Recover against back when I implemented this in 2022 have since disappeared in that malicious paper wallet websites that generate either deterministic private keys or send them to a scammer when you generate them is one of the oldest scams in the book. So again, paper wallets are fraught with danger at every step of their generation, storage and use. So are best avoided in 2024. So there you go. For any of these raw private key recoveries I've showed you with BTC Recover, once you have the correct private key, the process for sweeping them or importing them into a different wallet is the same as any other normal private key. If you have a larger value paper wallet that you are looking to sweep, I have a video on how to do that securely with offline signing and Electrum here. Alternatively, if the idea of offline signing with Electrum is daunting to you and seems a bit too hard, the Elipal hardware wallets are still, to my knowledge, the only hardware devices on the market that allow you to import an individual loose private key and offline sign that using a hardware wallet. Even if you don't plan to use the Elipal long term because of its closed source nature, this might be something that you see it as useful for in terms of moving your funds from a paper wallet to something more robust long term. So hopefully that's been helpful in terms of being able to recover from small mistakes or errors you might have in a single private key or a paper wallet. Uh, if you have any questions about the process or you get stuck, you know, just leave a reply in the comment section. I do my best to answer all of them. If you're totally, totally stuck and need some one-on-one -on -one support or a trusted recovery, you can request those on my website here. Other than that, stay safe. Thanks for watching. I hope that was helpful. Hit like if you think that other people would find this video useful and hit subscribe if you'd like to be kept in the loop about future content I make that helps people stay safe in the crypto space and to recover if they get into trouble. If you have any questions about this video or a topic that you'd like me to cover, just leave a reply.